you've probably taken a test with a true-false question at least once in your lifetime. Similarly, there are scenarios in programming where a value can only be either one or two options. These options are known as booleans. Hi, I'm Victor, and today on Heights Above Sea Level, we'll be looking at booleans in C Sharp. Before we get started, if you want to talk more about this kind of thing, be sure to follow me on Twitch at Height Above Sea Level, where I do some live coding sessions as well as try and answer some of your questions as best I can. In the operators video, I said that comparison operators return a Boolean value. So that's one of the things we'll be discussing today. If you're not familiar with operators, I recommend watching the video I will link to the top right of your screen. But if you are, then let's get started. Boolean values can either be only true or false. They can't be anything else. It has to be true or false. And they also can be stored in a variable just like numbers and strings. So why don't we take a look at creating variables or declaring variables, Boolean variables in C-sharp. So you can start with bool because this is the keyword for a Boolean value, vari a Boolean value or variable. So we say is open, we say true. Again, we can also say bool is closed is false. So this is how you declare a variable of type boolean. Again, just like before, we can use var, we can say as number is equals to true. And then if you hover over var, you will see that it's a boolean. I can do that real quick. There it is, boolean. Now you may have noticed a little bit of a pattern here, is open, is closed, has number, because this is kind of a convention when declaring Boolean variables. They start with is or has, and you can tell at a glance because when you're writing an application or a program, you'll have so many variables, and if you want to know the type quickly, you can tell by the way it's written. So is, anything that starts with is or has, is normally a boolean so just in case you're reading someone else's code or even for your own code it should help you when you're trying to see the type of variable without having to hold over the var keyword or check what type it is you can just see that it is called is open is closed has number has value you know right away that these are booleans Right, and another thing to know about Booleans is that they have a default value of false. Let's say you created a Boolean value, or instead of creating a Boolean value, you had an option. Let's say you're working, you're writing a program, and the user has to specify either true or false. Let's say bool, no, not that, but bool and we can call it is let's say you're, it's an application for college and says on meal plan and by default this is false but let's say you could you could either change this to true false or decide not to select it or to provide a value if a value is not provided to a boolean value it defaults to false i mean to false and this is something that's common in other types as well so remember when we looked at numbers like integers, uh, floats, and we looked at long and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, they also have default values. So I can do this here just to be. Let me add booleans, just so we can see them and differentiate them better. So default value for numbers. Most numbers I've seen, at least I know for an int that one for sure, it's zero. But for most numbers, the default value is zero. And then the default value, we spell default correct, default value for strings, that is an empty string. So if you had an option to provide a Boolean value and don't provide anything, it goes defaults to false. If you have an option to provide a number and you don't provide anything, it defaults to zero. And the default value for a string is an empty string i hope that's clear real quick if you're enjoying this please consider 
If you're enjoying the content, please consider supporting me over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash height above sea level, and you will get these colors and the instructions of how to set it up. I came up with this theme called the Sakura theme. And if you want it and you like it, you want your code editor to look like mine, consider supporting me over on Patreon and I will give you the instructions so you can get the Sakura theme for your code editor. All right, moving on. Also, in the previous video for operators, we learned that comparison operators return a Boolean value. Why don't we look at this in an example? So let's say, let's store this thing called results. Actually, before I go there, I can write one of these on the console just to show you what it looks like. And it'll either, if let's say is open, it will just write true because that's it, it's just true. And there's nothing special going on. I press control on F5, so it's building. Give it a second. There it is, true. Same for is closed, it's going to give me false. So Boolean values can also be written in the console without being in a string because that's how they are. It's it's a special way of working with Booleans in most programming languages. Now back to comparison operators. We said that comparison operators return a Boolean value. So let's make a comparison operator and store it in a variable so we can see. So let's say outcome or why well, we start with making the numbers of so first number is equals to 10 our second number is equal to 20 and then let's say outcome let's compare these two so let's say first number is greater than second number and if you hover over var you'll see this is a boolean so remember is first we're asking a question comparison operators they also ask a question you can okay not you can think of them as asking a question. Think of them as asking a question. So, is a first number greater than the second number? Is 10 greater than 20? That is a false statement. And we can write this on the console. Write outcome. Control and F5. Whoops. I can delete this and just leave this and write on the console control and f5 outcome is false remember first number 10 is not greater than second number but what if i said is first number equal to is that a true statement is 10 equal to 20 is that a true statement well let's see no it's a false statement but what if we said remember this the negation operator not equals to is first number not equal to second number is 10 not equal to 20 that's true and so the outcome is going to be true so as you see comparison operators return a boolean value and you can use these as conditions for if statements and this is something i said i'd cover in another video so hopefully i'm still thinking of covering it so please subscribe if you want to see that as well but i will cover just a bit of it here as well and these are called if else statements so in general they're known as conditional statements and for now we're going to cover if else statements and these these are you write if they need a condition to be true in order to be executed. So we need a condition here. A condition is anything that returns a Boolean value. You can even put a Boolean value here to begin with. Oops. True and closing brackets. And say right on the console. The condition is true. And let me comment this out the control K, control C. And now look at this if true. Right, the condition is true on the console. Remember, we worked with strings before. Now, we, now we can use them here because hopefully you watched the previous video on strings. But if you haven't, I'll link that to the top right of your screen. But we can use this as well in the right line method. 
So what do you think is going to happen? This is true. And so we're going to write on the console, control and F5. The condition is true. But if you write false in here, it's not going to execute this, this console.write line. I'm even getting a squiggly line because it's saying, well, it's always going to be false. As you can see, nothing is written on the console. This press any key to continue is the default behavior and it'll always be at the end. So if I just press any key like spacebar, it closes the console. But I can say if not false, meaning it's true, it works. The condition is true is written. Now let's look at these and pass this as the condition. Remember, this returns a Boolean value. Anything that returns a Boolean value can be here and they can act as switches. So you can also think of Boolean values as switches. So if the condition is true, let me write this, think of Booleans, not Booleans, but Booleans as switches. So if the condition is true, the switch has been turned on and this is executed. If it's false, switch is turned off, this is not executed. So let's do this. Last number, let me copy that. Is equals to so we're asking you don't you can even use the outcome because we stored it in a variable but for now this is the same thing outcome is just equals to this but we can use this directly so we remove that paste it here remove this but remember we're asking a question is first number not equal to second number is 10 not equal to 20 that is true the condition is met so this is going to execute But what if the condition is false? Remember, nothing happens. Control and F5, nothing's written on the console. But let's say you wanted something to happen. If the switch is turned on, then the lights come on and all the mach machinery start working. But if the switch is turned off, then you want to shut down the machinery. That's just, that's just an example. But in programming, let's say if this condition is true, then is not true, then you want to do something else. That's where an else statement comes in. And you say the condition is not true. So is first number not equals to second number? And also one thing is only one of these can be executed. So if this is true, then this will be executed, this will be ignored. But if this is false, this won't be executed and this will be, will be executed. So let's check. Let's use this first number, 10 equals second number, 20. No, that is false. This condition is not met. This will not be executed. So this is going to be executed. Control and F5 to run the application. The condition is not true. And if you change it back to, let's say first number is less than, second number 10 is less than 20, that is true. This will be executed. This is ignored. Control and F5. The condition is true. But what if, just as we're winding up real quick, what if you wanted to do something when something else in between, let's say you wanted uh, another option. So right now you only have two options. Let's say you wanted a third option, something to happen if this is, if the condition is not met. So that's where we add something known as an else if. Else if statement curly braces. Whoops. One second. This has given me. So if statement. Else if. Oh, I know what's going on. Else if requires parentheses as well. And then like this. So let's say we're testing first number and second number. So if first number is greater than second number, we say first number is bigger. Let me just write this out, write this real quick. First number is bigger. But if first number is less than second number, we write on the console a string. First number is smaller. But let's say first number is neither greater than the second number, nor less than the first number is neither greater than the second number, nor less than the second number. So 
what does that mean? That means that both numbers are equal. All right, so why don't we test this? Remember, only one of these can be executed. If first number is greater than executed, we found our match, condition is here, is true, this is executed, everything else is ignored. But if first number is not greater than second number, this is ignored, we go to the second one. Now we're checking, is first number less than the second number? Is 10 less than 20? We found a match, this is executed, this is ignored, and this is ignored. But if first number is not greater than the second number, first number is not less than the second number, then both numbers are equal. All right, so let's, let's check this. Let's check and see what's gonna happen here. So 10 is first number 20. Is 10 greater than 20? No, this is ignored. Is 10 less than 20? Yes, this is going to be written. And if I, write, if I press control and F5, first number is smaller. Remember, this returns a Boolean value. First number is smaller. But if I say first number is equals to 100, we'll test all these statements. And the first condition that meets the criteria, or the first condition that's true, that's the if statement that, that's the block of code that will be executed. So is first number greater than second number? Is 100 greater than second than 20? Yes. We found our condition that's true here. All this is ignored. Control on F5 to see it on the console. Yes, first number is bigger. Remember, 100 is bigger than 20, so write that on the console. But what if I put 20 here? Is 20 greater than 20? No, ignore this. Is 20 less than 20? No, ignore this and ignore this. Now, since none of these meet the criteria, then it has to be this. This can be think, thought of as a failsafe. And if I press Ctrl and F5, both numbers are equal. I can minimize this. And another thing is that you can uh, have a lot of if statements, although it's not recommended. You can have else if, else if, else if. It's not the best practice to have a bunch of if statements. But we'll look at that in the conditional statements video, God willing, when that comes out. That is all I had for you guys. Did you learn something new today about Booleans? Did you work with Booleans before and come into C Sharp? And how did I do? Did I go too fast? Did you learn something? Or was I moving too quickly and everything was just flying by you? Let me know in the comments below. Again, if you do want to get this custom colors, this custom Sakura theme, please consider supporting me over on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash height above sea level. I also stream on Twitch. If you want to talk more about this kind of thing, live on stream. And if that doesn't work, am I going to Discord instead? Just click the link in the description below and become a member of the Water Tribe today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, from me to you, deuces.